tutorial. So once again, I've created another all-in-one Blu-ray disc for the new jailbreak this time for 12.52, which includes everything you need to set up the jailbreak all on the one disc. And all you have to do is burn the ISO to your Blu-ray disc and you'll have it prepared. And basically it includes a autoloader version from uh, Lucas Leal Dev, which just modifies the exploit to automatically load the jailbreak when you load the disc instead of having to press a button on the controller to trigger it. So that's been implemented in this version. It also has, of course, the main utility homebrew applications included on the disc that can be installed directly. And also the cheats, patches and plugins, as well as payloads, are all on the disc meaning that you do not need an internet connection to be able to install everything and get the jailbreak fully set up all from the one disk. So I'm going to show you how you can set it up here in this video. So as usual, if you're setting this up for the first time, you need to head into your notification section and then just make sure you don't have a system software update that's waiting to be installed. If you do, make sure you press the options button and delete that system update file. Then go into your settings menu and scroll down to the system settings and go to automatic downloads and make sure you uncheck all of the boxes in here. And then you can go to your network settings and also disconnect from the internet as we should not be needing an internet connection because we can install everything from the one disk and it also stops updates. And then finally, if we go down to the system settings and system information, you need to make sure that your system software version is 12.52 or a lower number. Anything higher, you will not be able to do this jailbreak. So then all you have to do is burn the ISO to the Blu-ray disc, which you can do using a software called ImageBurn, or you can use the default burner within Windows, but I recommend ImageBurn. It tends to be more reliable, gives you more options. So I'm going to go ahead and open up ImageBurn and select the option to write the image file to the disc. And then I'll take my all-in-one version of the hen loader and drag that ISO file into ImageBurn. You can also click this button here to browse for it manually. Uh, if you cannot drag and drop it into image burn then just insert your blank blu-ray disc either a bd-r or bd-re disc i prefer verbatim discs because they tend to be higher quality and i don't have any issues with them but if you are having issues with different discs you can adjust the write speed sometimes writing at a different speed can improve things and then we can go ahead and simply click the button to write the image file to the disc and then wait for that to write. It will take longer than the initial version because there's a lot of additional stuff packed into this ISO. So you might have to wait a few minutes for it to write the image file to the disk and then do the verification step. But once it's done, it should say the operation was completed successfully. And then you can eject that disk and insert it into the PS4. Which brings us over to this stage here where we have the disc inserted. We've got the hen loader all in one. Unfortunately, when you load a Blu-ray disc for the first time and you've never connected to the internet before, when loading a Blu-ray disc, it will require you to enable the internet connection for Blu-ray playback. This is only required once just to enable the features and activate the licenses. Once that's done, you can disconnect from the internet and you'll still be able to load Blu-ray discs when offline, but you will have to enable the internet connection at least once to enable that feature to be able to launch the Blu-ray disc. And then once you've done that, you can disconnect from the internet again and you will not have to reconnect. So that is the general idea. You may also get a message about enabling BD-Live. Just say yes to that message. And then also you'll need to make sure that HDCP is enabled in the settings. If you go down to the system settings, you need to make sure that enable HDCP is ticked. Otherwise, it will not let you launch the Blu-ray disc. So I'm going to select it with X to start up the disc. And then you'll see that it will automatically start trying to run the jailbreak as soon as it loads. So there it is. You can see it immediately starts running and it's, and it's a success. And we have Gold 10 running version 2.4 B18.7. Obviously, if it fails and it says you have to reboot the PS4, then just reboot the console and load the disk again until it works. So it might take a few attempts. But once we're done, we can close the application. And once it's closed, if we head into the Gold 10 settings, you want to scroll down to the settings menu and enable the option for BD App Auto Kill, which means the next time you load the disk to run the jailbreak, it will automatically close the disk player for you once Gold 10 is loaded, which makes it a lot quicker to get up and running with the jailbreak. So now that we have the jailbreak running, we can get everything else we need for the jailbreak set up and installed directly from the one disk. So if I go into the Gold Hand settings, you can see I don't have the Game Patch plugin or the AIO Fix plugin. 
We don't have any plugins installed. We don't have any cheats, patches, or anything else installed here. But what we can do is head over to the debug settings and go to the package installer. And then all the package files that are on the disk should appear here. And you can just install all to get all of these utility-based homebrew applications installed onto the PS4. It will take a little bit longer to install these than it normally would from a USB drive because obviously the read and write speeds on the disk are slower. But these homebrew applications are pretty small, so it shouldn't take too long to install all of these. Okay, last homebrew application installing the homebrew store, which isn't going to be useful to you if you never connect to the internet. But anyway, that's all of the homebrew applications. So I can press the options button, add to folder. We'll add to a new folder and then just call this folder homebrew and then just keep all your homebrew applications organized in the one folder here. So we'll just select them all right here and confirm. And then we have all of our homebrew applications, which is fantastic. Now to install the cheats, patches and 